In waste to energy plants, bottom ash and filter ash are the main residues of incineration process. In this video, we'll demonstrate some existing technologies of IBA recycling. Firstly, what volumes we are talking about. Incineration bottom ash or slag makes up to 20-25% of the weight of incoming municipal solid waste. Filter ash is about 5% by weight. For example, average waste to energy plant burns about 360,000 tons of garbage annually, producing up to 90,000 tons of IBA and up to 18,000 tons of filter ash. In terms of volume, it looks like this. One cubic meter of compressed municipal garbage after incineration turns into such a volume of slag and into such a volume of ash. Since waste to energy are often located in the immediate vicinity of the cities or inside them, they do not have large areas for the full processing of slag and ash. At the plant itself, slag is cooled by water, primarily separated with magnetic separators and accumulated in the bunker. Ash is collected in and accumulated separately. Further, the IBA and ash are taken by specialized operators to landfills. In Europe, these wastes are transported to special landfills where the second stage of recycling is taking place. Processing refers to the extraction of metals from slag. At the landfill, incineration bottom ash goes through multi-stage separation. First, the vibrating sieves divide the slag into several streams according to particle size. Because magnetic and eddy current separators work efficiently only with the flow of similar particles. Ferrous metals in the slag can be up to 10% by weight of the slag. Slag separated free of metals is collected separately and remains at the, land at the landfill or partially used in road constructions. Next comes the struggle for non-ferrous metals. First comes the manual sorting, where large pieces of non-ferrous metals are removed, mostly aluminum, copper, tin, zinc and stainless steel. Magnetic and eddy current separation occurs repeatedly many times during the entire process for every stream. Here are the eddy current separators. They extract non-ferrous metals from the slag. The non-ferrous metals in the slag are usually up to 2%. This 2% is a mixture of non-ferrous metals with a large residue of slag itself. Up to 50% of the slag may still remain on the metals. Therefore, there is a separate business, separate specialized companies that take this mixture for further processing. Two processing methods are distinguished here, the so-called wet and dry methods. First, we will analyze the dry processing method. Here we are at one of these specialized plants, RECO Recycling in the Netherlands. They take this mixture of non-ferrous metals from slag operators. Processing it, clean it from slag and separate aluminum from a mixture of heavy metals such as tin, zinc, copper and others. The raw materials arriving to RECO are immediately distributed in the boxes depending on the size of the fraction. And then it enters the workshop and undergoes multi-stage sorting. In the workshop, additional grinding of raw materials and separation on vibrating screens is carried out residual slag in form of dust is extracted with air. Then each flow of raw materials is directed to densimetric tables. These machines separate aluminum, which density is 2.7 gram, from heavy metals such as copper, zinc, tin and others with a density of 7 gram and higher. As you can see, the production is quite dusty. Because there is a struggle with slag, it must be removed from metals. At the end of production chain, two types of products are obtained, aluminum and a mixture of heavy metals. This plant doesn't make further separation of heavy metals mixture. It sells it as mixture and there is a certain demand for this. Aluminum and a mixture of heavy metals in different fractions are sold at different prices to smelters where the metals are purified and separated by the chemical method. Mm -hmm. 
Now we are at this Ubersoft facilities in Switzerland. The technology of slug processing here is mostly the same as in the previous example, but they have more equipment and more thorough sorting. Here is a six-story structure, a huge workshop stuffed with equipment. The incoming slug stream is divided into several streams. According to the size of the fraction, it is crushed in stages and separated by densimetric tables. The result is at least 15 to 20 different sized aluminum fractions and a mixture of non-ferrous heavy metals. Here is the incoming raw materials. As in the previous example, it is divided into fractions according to size and filled in sections. Here you can see that the fraction on the right is from 0 to 3 and on the left from 3 to 12. Here loaders feed the material in a processing line. You can see a range of dense metric tables. There is at least 18 of them, which means at least 18 different size fraction. Here you can see fraction size in the dense metric table. Grinding equipment, rotary shredders, impact crushers, dozens of vibrating separators, hammer crushers. Huge dust removal system. The output is a few fractions of aluminum and several fractions of heavy metals. They are uniform in size and purified from slack. Now let's consider the wet method of processing a mixture of non-ferrous metals. We are back in Holland at the Dolphin plant, which from the outside looks as elegant as water park, not waste recycling plant. Inside we see the same initial stage of the process as in the previous examples. The raw materials ready for processing are stored in compartments, depending on the fraction and particular supplier. Then the raw materials are fed to the workshop with a front loader. Inside the workshop, since we are dealing with a wet processing method now, a significant part is occupied by the wastewater treatment system. The raw materials through a series of conveyors and magnets get into the main machine, a rotary drum separator. This is where the magic happens. Instead of water, a solution of ferrous silicon and a alloy of iron and uh, silicon uh, with the density of about 3 gram per liter is fed inside the drum. They call this liquid medium. The density of the medium ensures the buoyancy of aluminum. So aluminum floats on the solution and all heavy metals, copper, zinc, tin, etc. sink. Thus separation occurs. After separation, the aluminum fraction is sent to warehouse by a separate conveyor and heavy metals are sent for further sorting. Here with the conveyor, heavies go into a closed room where five people under the supervision of uh, three cameras known to them and two hidden from them carry out the selection of coins and precious metals. Underneath the room, copper enters the box, coins goes into a uh, jumbo bag, gold and silver go directly in the sealed safe. I've been told they managed to collect about 5000 euros in coins only within a year. Coins of different countries from around the world. Here we have another example of wet processing. This time we are in Italy and we will see a very compact plant. The plant is assembled on an open concrete site in a week. After installation a building is erected from above. The area of the plant is only about 500 square meters.
Raw materials are conveyed to the workshop by conveyor. In the workshop, we can see the same technology as in the previous example. The main job is performed by a rotary drum separator and a ferrosilicon solution. An important role is played by a wastewater treatment system, and in particular, the part that is responsible for the recovery of ferrosilicon solution. This drum returns ferrosilicon to the system. Since ferrosilicon contains iron, it is magnetized, and thanks to this, magnetic drum returns it to multiple circulation. As in the previous example, we can see that the raw material after the drum separator is divided into two streams. On the right is a stream of aluminium, on the left is a stream of heavy metals. These are the two end products of processing. Each stream is washed and accumulated in open compartments. We are again in Netherlands and we want to show you another plant, Liquisot, which uses wet technology but differs from the previous two. The difference is quite significant as a liquid medium. Uh, not a ferrosilicon solution is used, but some other comp composition, uh, the secret of which is kept strictly enough and I was not allowed to make any picture of the composition and even wasn't allowed to, close, uh, to get close enough. Here is a liquid. It looks like a crude oil. First, one processing line separates aluminum from heavy metals. Now the density of the medium is about 3 kilo per liter same as ferrosilicium medium. When the medium has a density of about 3 kilo per liter, only aluminum floats on it. But this secret medium, you can adjust the density higher and even adjust different densities. Here is a result of the first run of non-ferrous mixture we have at the output light metals on the left and heavy metals on the right. And now on the second line, the medium is adjusted to a density of about 8 kilo per liter and the heavy metals fraction is processed again, removing zinc with 7.1 and tin with 7.3. The result, we have almost clean copper in the end. And then you can even process this super copper fraction once again with the medium density of about 10 and separate copper, which is 8.9 from silver which is 10.5 and gold which is 19.3 Some key figures are summarized here. Slug processing is carried out in four stages, each stage with different enterprises of different specialization. And here is the map of waste to energy plants and salmon kilns in Europe. It's just to understand the scale of this slag processing business in Europe. As you can see, there are hundreds of waste to energy plants in Europe and, not less, plants processing bottom ash for them. Traveling all around the European slag recycling plants, we have seen lots of specialized machinery for this industry and we found out that in Russia there is also a big manufacturer of these machines. For slug recycling and waste processing industry, Erga company provides complete lines with automatic control. Here we can see the compact slug recycling line and the compact ferromagnetic metal separation line from a mixture of scrap and soil. Erga company was founded in 1991 and for years has been a first-class manufacturer of densimetric tables, eddy current separators, electrostatic separators and other machines for mining, recycling and other industries. The company can provide world-class quality and thanks to high level of localization can offer significantly more competitive prices comparing to European analogs. Erga is the only manufacturer of densimetric separators in Russia. Here we can see aluminum is separated from copper due to its different densities. Using vibration and uh, adjusted airflow, copper rises up and aluminum moves down. 
These machines are widely implemented in recycling cables, glass, non-ferrous metal scrap, electric and electronic equipment, etc. This is zigzag air separator. In this case, PVC film is separated from the heavy plastics. Separation occurs by density and windage. In this example, the PVC film moves up and the rest of the plastics falls down. And this is an electrostatic separator. Materials are separated by electrical conductivity. Conductors, copper and aluminum in this case, are attracted to the electrode and go to the right. Dielectrics, PVC in this case, goes down under the drum.